so uh, today I like to talk about robots and intelligence, and in particular the question is, can robots be intelligent? So, but and if yes, then how can we build such robots that we can deem intelligent? But to for those questions to make really any sense, we have to first think about what is intelligence. So I will start a bit maybe further back in the sense, and I won't go in this talk too much into any technological part because I want this to be reachable for the whole audience. So pardon me if I happen to be a bit philosophical at times. So there have been numerous attempts to define human intelligence. Fortunately, today we don't have to talk about those. So let's just stick to, to, the, to the question, what is intelligence machines such as robots? And uh, let's approach this question from uh, the point of view of an example. So does driving a car require intelligence? So surely, in order to drive the car, you need to see around, perceive the world, you need to steer it purposefully towards your destination to reach the goal. Uh, so is it that sufficient that we can say that the Google's car is intelligent? So the problem of defining machine intelligence actually uh, dates back to the 50s from when Turing wrote a similar paper and proposed this Turing test, which in a way tries to define machine intelligence way, which for me makes a lot of sense, which is from a functional perspective. So, so basically that if we cannot see the Turing's definition for the Turing test, that if we can differentiate the actions a machine makes from those made by a human, then we would say that that machine can think or in the context of this presentation would be exhibit some level of intelligence. So in that sense that we, we can define the intelligence as with respect to a functionality of that system, what that system can do rather than its structure, how it's built. I think, and this is I think one of the key issues in order to an, understand when we are talking about intelligent machines, not to talk about what is the way, uh, only way how they are structured, but we can define the intelligence as a capability. For example, as an ability to operate in complex environments in a generalizable and predictable way. So I guess that this, for the Google car, this definition would make it exhibit some level of intelligence. So it operates in a complex environment relatively predictably. There are maybe some situations when it does worse than humans, but it still seems relatively intelligent. And uh, so basically, in order to do that, a system to operate intelligently, according to this definition, the system needs to observe its environment. It needs to look around, and it needs to do some thinking. So it needs to do decision making in order to do some actions on the world. And this basically creates a loop between these observations or percepts and actions, and that loop, the perception action loop, is in a way the key or central component in building intelligence systems. So the key is understanding how those parts of the loop are built together. So similar to human intelligence, machine intelligence comes in many flavors. So we cannot say that Intelligent is one thing, but we can say, for example, for machines, that then some machines can have very intelligent perceptual systems. So they can do, from human perspective, very intelligent perception. They can, for example, your mobile phone cameras can detect faces, which is, let's say, a relatively intelligent thing to do in a crowd, for example. Or that they can do decision making, or they can do very robust actions. But these things are not the same thing uh, that having an intelligence in the sense that we can have very high level perceptual capabilities without high level action or decision making capabilities or learning capabilities. So we can, intelligent in that sense is a very multifaceted thing. So when we consider the functional definition of intelligent, 
The simplest way to build intelligence is to engineer it. So let me see if I can make the video running. So basically here, for example, a robot is grasping things in the box. It actually doesn't see more or less at all. It just feels around in the box to find things. But in a way, just engineering these behaviors for a robot makes it exhibit complex object handling capabilities. It has no idea what there is in the, uh, in the box. It is just having a kind of reflex that allows it to try around in the box to find objects to adapt to its environment and exhibit, in a way, engineered intelligent behavior. So what we are having there is that, well, if you tell that, OK, it was just engineered that way, that actually, for a human, makes a big difference. For most of us, we believe uh, that kind of lowers the rating for intelligent behavior, although from the functional perspective, it doesn't really matter how the intelligent capability is built. So nevertheless, most of the state-of-the-art solutions go beyond engineering, and mainly they employ machine learning instead. Uh, so in machine learning, the idea, the basic idea is that humans have provided examples of correct answers to some problems, and then the system or machine learns to generalize or make generalizable predictions based on those human-labeled examples. For example, here, uh, we are asking a system to predict rela related com uh, uh, concepts to this photograph, and it con uh, predicts concepts such as technology, industry, production, indoors, machine, science, room, control, which hopefully are more or less related to this. It also predicts concepts such as medicine and hospital, which are not related to the high voltage lab. But still, if I would be shown this picture, and if I wouldn't have a label that this is the high voltage lab, I could have made those same predictions myself if I didn't know the answer. So we can say that in that sense, the predictions uh, for well-defined perceptual problems, such as face detection, we can say that these approaches of machine learning and prediction with the current state of the art is already at the human level. Making quick predictions based on examples when we have basically told the system what do we want to generalize. But the world is not that rosy, so that even though we can make fast perceptual decisions or predictions based on vast number of human-labeled examples, the systems, this basically computer system software, do not have usually any understanding of semantics. So if you're looking at this picture and asking how many chairs there are in this picture, there's chairs there, but there's also chair and the ceiling, which probably more looks at first, at, at least at the first glance, a lamp. There is a shadow of a chair. There is a picture of a chair hanging on a wall. Suddenly, even counting or detecting all the chairs in the picture is not anymore at all trivial. Because you need to understand what it really means that something is a chair. This becomes even more pronounced in the question is actually, I need a chair to sit down, but actually that doesn't mean that I need a chair. I need something to sit down on. And doesn't necessarily need to be a chair at all. So actually to understand the semantic meanings of the world is one of the really underlying problems in the whole thing. So uh, we currently have no systems that could really understand the semantics, but of course, we are, the current work is going towards that. So for harder perceptual problems. So before going into how to get to these semantics, many problems can be solved without them. So for example, here Alberto teaches a robot how to use a wood plane. So the robot can learn to replicate the, how the human controls interaction forces between the tool and the wood without having any understanding of the semantics. So actually, this imitating the humans is one of the key ways to build intelligence systems. So uh, that means that uh, actually that's not so surprising when we consider Turing's 
original idea that when we don't see difference between human action and machine action, that is what we consider intelligence. So more complex problems often require more than instantaneous decision making, such as looking where is the face or where is the chair in the picture. And these problems are considerably harder to crack. Uh, Basically, that the reason is that series of decisions, uh, the latter decisions depend on the former ones. So we can't make individual de uh, uh, decisions independently, but we have to really consider a series of decisions. And uh, basically how this is done in these systems is that the systems internally simulate the effects uh, of some uh, decisions, in a way, they are doing what if I first did this, what I then, then I did that, and what would really happen in order to get to the goal. So for environments such as this game of Go, but where the outcome of each action is well defined, this works rather well. I mean, the uh, systems can beat humans in most of these well-defined worlds. Unfortunately, the real world is seldom well defined, and that's where we hit the major problem. Where even if we can re, uh, solve chess or this game of Go, robots are not at all on the same level of making these sequences of decisions. So, one way to progress beyond well defined problems is that a system can, in addition to learn from imitating humans, learn from its own experience. So, observe what happens when it does things, and update the mo uh, the, its internal models of the world based on that. And so that changes the role of a human quite a lot, in the sense that the human does not anymore need to describe to the system, of the developer of the system, doesn't need to describe how the world works and how to get to the goal. It just needs to be able to define the goal. And the system can independently start to search for a path towards its goal, whether that is how to do planning, whether that is how to learn to drive a car, or something else. So let me just show here one small video which shows that even if you are perfectly imitating human action, so here this is just a simple stupid demonstration of a ball in cup game where if you just imitate it, it doesn't work. So the robot actually after something like 50 new trials, learning about how the world works, how to play this game, it finally succeeds. So we are nowadays able to build robots that for example, even to a dishwasher. The problem is that we are not able to build robots that would empty any dishwasher in any kitchen, which doesn't make a good business case. So the problem, the technological problem, is then the generalization. How individual skills can be combined towards tasks across different environments. And a central research issue is then how do we model the world its dynamics and the desired outcomes. And this is a big research question that we have been working on for a long time and the jury is still out on that. I'm not, uh, this is more a research perspective that I think that we will need at least the next 10 years to have more definite solutions for that. But towards that, I'd like to propose one viewpoint. So actually, I would like to propose that understanding humans is a key to modeling the desired outcomes. So actually, that robot needs to understand the humans and re react to their needs and their intentions. So basically, only by understanding, that understanding will, will enable them to work in, for example, under conflicting goals and ambiguities. So, if there, the, okay, the classic example, which is not that good, is if we have an ethical problem when there are two bad outcomes, it actually, we need to understand what the human would do in that case. But even in the case where we are just having conflicting goals in a much more mundane setting, 
it's actually the key is understanding what the humans really want to achieve in order to get to the desired outcomes. So even if this talk started from engineering intelligence systems, building, grasping primitives or primitive actions from, uh, from as basically designing and developing the systems, I think uh, that the one key issue towards semantic machine intelligence is in, uh, is lies in understanding us rather than the machines. And that's actually where I would like to end. I want to thank all people, robots, uh, organizations, funding agencies for the help to make this possible so far. Thank you. Thank you.